Volcanoes provide us with so much. Gases that feed our atmosphere and steam that created our oceans. Without them, there wouldn't be any life on Earth. But they also threaten that very life. By endangering more people than ever before. So predicting their next move has never been so crucial. For a lot of people, this is a worst case scenario. I'm volcano expert Chris Horsley, and in the name of science, I've climbed up and into Whoa. volcanoes all over the world. Get myself ready for a night in hell. Over two years, I dragged a reluctant documentary crew up eight erupting volcanoes. It's so hot, it's so unbelievably hot. To help volcanologists collect data and install systems with the ultimate aim of saving lives. The Spanish Canary Island of La Palma. This little-known territory was ground zero of a volcanic event that rocked the world. Early in the year, a hillside on the island's southwest burst open, turning half the island into Mordor. The military evacuated residents as lava tore through towns. and spilled into the sea, leaving thousands of people homeless. I was here in the first days of the eruption, but had to leave as my accommodation was believed to be in the path of the incoming lava. Importante sacar las cosas, ya luego grabamos. Pack and film. Everyone got their passport. All right, that's it, thank you. Two and a half months on, and the landscape has changed dramatically. I'm back, and this island is still no easier to navigate. This car's not meant for this. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's bottomed out. Is it? Just go back a bit and get more power into it. Give more, give more energy, man. Boom, boom. Just full throttle on it, yeah. No, it, it digs in, though. Before you push the clutch, just give more, more power. Yeah, 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 that's it. It digs in, it's just not... Keep right, keep right. Don't go too much to your left, because there's a big bum here of sand. Yeah, go right, go right, yeah. Go for it, go, go, go. Straight up, straight up. Keep on going, keep on going. The problem is Fabio's out of the car now and we can't stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to further document the eruption. At most volcanoes, I'd assist volcanologists by installing monitoring equipment or collecting samples. But here, the Spanish authorities have an army of highly trained personnel so everything is in hand. So instead, this trip, I'm granted unprecedented access to document the activity within Ground Zero. Look at that. Just a road into the mouth of the cone. A huge increase in altitude. That whole black mound wasn't there before. That was just a small, small hill. Joining me are filmmakers Ollie and Fabio. I, I've got ash in my nose, in my ears, everywhere now. Tomorrow, we'll join scientists on the ground. But today, 
I'm eager to witness the impact of the eruption from street level to source, inside the government-imposed exclusion zone. We're just approaching one of the control centres, the military vehicles here. Do you have a passport? Yeah, passport. Dame los documentos de identidad y yo llamo a ver por qué. Dale, sí, sí, están haciendo siempre. Si no tenés QR, es más complicado. Not even residents living within this area are allowed to pass this point because the eruption is still ongoing. It's quite important to count in and count out, make sure nobody's left behind. There's a lot of volcanic gases around and also there's potential for fresh lava flows to emerge. Due to my substantial experience with volcanoes, my team and I are the only documentary crew with full access to the lava flow. Wow, that looks a lot different. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. We reach another roadblock. Oh, my word. But this time, it's not the police. see this wall of lava there that's came down and just in the distance there the cause of it that's came up probably three kilometers away from this point I mean that building is just a facade if you just look behind you see kind of the true extent of the damage there collapses on the uh, on the roof probably due to well fire and ash this place would have been a furnace it's even hard to understand it. You just look in, uh, we, we were walking on the street a matter of weeks ago, and now we see that. There's a bar open just down the road. It's a wild Saturday night, that. I know you can imagine this place thriving with activity, being like the, the bustle, the life of this area. This place should be alive. And right now, it's very far from alive. No, it's like a scene from a horror film. And this wrecked street is just a tiny piece of the destruction. We drive up to a viewpoint we visited before. The top of this hill was a bustling meeting place. Where locals could check if their houses within the valley were safe because from here, you could see the entire lava field. But now... Wow. There are no locals. Oh, my God. Because there are hardly any houses. So different. Wow, great. Look at it. Yeah. This whole area, it's a picturesque place. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. And um, it was all inhabited, some beautiful homes, swimming pools, everything. And it stretches as far as the eye can see. And now that is all covered by new rock. Kind of in the center there, there's a, there's a church in there. Kind of one yeah, of- isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, it's, you, you can't even see it anymore. It's buried. We can see from here that lava cascaded from the Cumbre Vieja Ridge. It traveled four miles downhill, burying five towns and villages before crashing into the sea. To date, over 1,600 buildings have been destroyed and only the occasional structure is spared. They were quite lucky then. Yeah, lucky is one way, but I mean, you can't really get to your house <laughs> anymore. Mm, that's true. I've seen some eruptions in my time, but never anything this devastating so close to home. I never imagined to see it cover that expanse. We're day number 75 right now, and it's, it's still not over. But the most striking change, looming over us at the source of the flow, is the massive 270-metre volcanic mound, which appeared 
out of nowhere. I want to find out just how active this crater still is. Look at that landscape. It really is like we're in a space buggy now driving over Mars. We're heading to the top of Cumbra Vieca. This is the ridge from which the lava burst. But at this altitude, visibility is barely 50 meters, meaning we may not see the volcano at all. We've got a lot of low cloud in here just because the altitude, we're, we're kind of right up in that cloud. But we'll, uh, we'll head up here and see, fingers crossed, but we'll only find out when we get there. The ash up here is too thick to drive on. So we need to continue on foot. Just over a mile away through this mist should be the volcano. On the mountainous island of La Palma, a two month long eruption appears to be gearing down. We're on an expedition to the crater to see if it's still showing signs of molten activity. It's pretty crazy, you can see some of the chunks of airborne material lying around. It's a lot of heat that's carried out this distance. How's visibility, Chris? Not great, but enough to see the crater. <clears throat> wow, look at that. Look at that, man. It's amazing. Woo! Well, it's pretty impressive standing in this landscape. Got a nice view of the uh, of the crater, backlit by the the sunset. And every now and again, you just see these larger gas emissions popping through. But this relatively calm column of ash is a far cry from the last time I was on the island. In the early days of the eruption, the volcano expelled molten lava with so much force, it created visible shock waves in broad daylight. Oh, look, I saw it. Oh, my God. That's a pretty serious shock wave. <laughs> the last time we were here, this area would have been a very different experience. You would have seen lava fountains, 200, 300 meters into the air right there. This is activity decreasing. and you don't see any incandescence or strombolian activity, any lava fountains. It just seems to be these quite large, strong gas emissions. But a closer look inside the crater could reveal more. That's a massive column of ash, man. No way, no way I'll be anywhere closer to that. Here I'm fine. Wind is blowing the other direction. Keep it away from us, please. I agree with my team. So I send in a potentially sacrificial drone. Oh, yeah. Can't beat a volcanic sunset. I have to remember that I'm in a high wind there. <laughs> the drone's definitely struggling with that. The drone battles clouds of ash and makes it to the crater intact. What's that noise, Chris? <laughs> Have a guess. <laughs> Is it Mr. Volcano? <laughs> it's Mr. Volcano knocking at the door. He's saying hi to us, mate. But with no lava in sight, this fading eruption seems to be all bark and no bite. Being up here and observing this, <clears throat> there's also a lot of beauty in, in volcanoes and it's kind of situations like this where, where you see that. It is pretty stunning. It is. We pack up to leave. Woo and notice this eruption is not over yet. Oh, a nice bit of strombolian activity there. You can just see on the corner. 
we can just see incandescence now, so that's probably visible only in, uh, in the darker hours. Normally that light is obscured by obviously daylight, but it's beautiful being up here at this time of the night because then you can start to see some of that activity within the crater. Tomorrow, we'll join volcanologists to find out whether or not these are the final days of this historic eruption. So tomorrow we'll be heading in inside the, uh, the danger zone, if you like. We'll be collecting a fresh sample with a volcanologist down there. And uh, it's from a lava flow just a few days old. Your fingers crossed, but we'll just get as close as possible, but also as safe as possible to that flow. Fabio, let's move. Really breathtaking. It's day 76 of La Palma's eruption, and to ensure the island's communities are kept safe, over 12 organizations, including emergency services and scientific institutions, work around the clock to predict this eruption's next move. One of the key players is the Spanish Geographic Institute. Stavros, good morning. I'm very well. This is Dr. Stavros Melitlidis. He's part of the team in charge of the 35 fixed science stations monitoring this significant natural disaster. Although the volcano is not a big one, here the problem is where the volcano uh, is located, no? So uh, it's, let's say, the most important uh, volcano activity in the world right now uh, that has to do with that people uh, living near. We have data from the seismological station, from GNSS. We also have some uh, cameras. So all this data every morning goes to the government so they can manage the, the crisis, the emergency. Wow, a pretty important role. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work. This is a, a group work, yeah. let's say, a, 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 a big group work. It seems like you're doing the right job. I mean, this, this eruption's been going on some time, and it's been a, a quite a powerful eruption, and so far, zero deaths, so I guess you're kind of doing it right. If the eruption goes on for another week, it will be the longest that La Palma has ever seen in recorded history. I mean, after all this destruction, not only people living here, but also us, the scientists, what we want and what we hope is, is not to, to break the record. Yeah, you, you're kind of wanting this to stop now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over the last week, Stavros's readings show that activity is significantly decreasing. Would you say that the eruption's coming to a close? We we'll have to wait some days to confirm if we're close to the end. So this is something that uh, we cannot confirm right now. Alongside Stavros's mountain-based monitoring equipment, scientists must also brave the volcano slopes to take fresh lava samples to further understand its next move. One man fearless enough. Oh my lord is the eruption's most rock and roll researcher, Dr. Valentin Troll, who's been monitoring the volcano since the very beginning. Oh, yes. At least in part, and it's coming at enormous speed. It's like a cannonball. The most recent molten rock was spotted two days ago on the volcano's north side. So I joined Valentin on a bid to find a fresh sample on the powdery northern slopes. You can start to see the mounds of ash deposited now. And this isn't even the worst zone. So it's not so far from here. Just going around two more bends and then we're there. OK. This far up the hill is evidence of the recent molten activity start to feel uh, the heat as it blows over. We're starting already. So guys, we have to go behind the fire. The yep. wind is blowing it out, so we're going to sample above the fire. Okay. Make sure you have your gas mask ready in case the wind turns. 11 weeks ago, this was a tiny private vineyard, but now it's the volcano's most recent victim. There's a little lava flow that came down, and then this big block, you can actually see there, so the skid marks. Oh, of course. And then it bumped into the house there. Actually, we have, we are in danger 
Because there is another there. big, yeah. a big block there that is allowed to, to roll down. It's gonna fall in the next week or two. Yes, as it slowly makes its way down, is it? One earthquake and it will come. Last time I predicted it's gonna take a week, it actually took two hours, so. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly we can't hang around. We're looking for a sample with some kind of timestamp. And 48 hours earlier, during what hopefully was the volcano's last lava flow, scientists caught on camera a huge chunk of molten rock literally snowballing down the mountain. See the large block there? This is one of those lava balls. They're actually like snowballs, but on lava. They roll down on the lava and they take up the uh, uh, sticky upper skin that's partly solidified. They can get quite enormous. Unlike its icy counterparts. I mean, still, still warm. This lava ball still stands strong two days later, and we must carve off our sample with caution. This was still hot. It was still glow yesterday, so I think this area down there is pretty okay. Normally, this would be my job, but since I'm strictly here as an observer, Dr. Valentin. Colors can I have the chisel, please? We'll do the honors. Please keep an eye on what I'm throwing out. Is it hot over there, Valentin? It's still warm enough to tell you that it's very recent. So we have some fresh lava sample here. But what's important to us is the minerals. So here we have a little bit of various minerals in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we hope to analyze them. And it's a pretty dense sample as well, isn't it? It is much... pretty dense. From samples collected in recent weeks, Valentin has noticed a potentially promising trend. Well, uh, the uh, lava chemistry has changed, first of all. So it seems that uh, there is some changes as to the depth from where we source the magma. That magma has moved up and maybe it means that once the piping system is emptied, it might be over. So some uh, scientists uh, speculate that uh, we are now in the closing phase of the eruption. Personally, I think we have to be a little careful because uh, this volcano has been full of surprises, so it might well come back with uh, more activity that we haven't quite uh, anticipated. You don't want to leave people with false hopes? No, that's right. Valentin will take this sample back to the lab. Mission accomplished. He needs to see if it reinforces the pattern of decreasing activity. But, as expected, later that night, the unexpected happens. Out of nowhere, the volcano bursts back to life. Molten lava destroys more houses. The government widens the exclusion zone and the disaster response teams are scrambled. The volcano has exploded back into action, and molten lava cascades down towards the ocean using toxic gas. Sky Close the window. New roads are blocked off, the authorities widen the exclusion zone, and we head in. There is uh, some explosive activity up there. My team have split up. For safety reasons, I go in solo to film the fire service in Valentin close to the lava source. Filmmaker Ollie heads out with police and marine biologists to the bottom of the flow. And Fabio joins local vets to ensure no animals are harmed in the making of this new lava. This is a very restricted situation right now. So we are accompanied by the fire brigade today. That's the car in front of us. We must have gas masks at all time. Valentin must inspect the new activity and collect samples for the government. Oh, my Lord. So here's the volcano and uh, look a little angry today. See the new lava that has come down at the side? 
Oh, yeah. uh, that's the that's the new lavas. They have no ash cover yet, so uh, they are the ones we are trying to catch when we go further down now. Half a mile from the lava, the firefighters wave us down. What's the problem? We can't risk our vehicles getting stuck in these toxic conditions. So, we have to walk from here. It's clearing a lot of the gas, but even with a tight mask on, there's a lot of gas about. These gas dispersing winds could die down any minute. So, we need to be quick. We're rushing down. Our time frames are very limited at the minute. The gas levels are a little bit too high to be operating in. Four miles down the hill, the eruption has been forging new land from the sea. And today's activity means it could increase in size. But when molten rock collides with the entities, it can create clouds of deadly gas. More people may need to be evacuated. So to find out, the military police escort marine biologist Melchor Gonzalez de Vila. The team are accompanied by filmmaker Ollie. What we doing? No, we are going now to the close to the lighthouse, and then we will go where the lava is just uh, at, at the sea. See. Three months ago, this 100-acre landmass didn't exist at all, and the original coastline is gone forever. Beach. This was a previous beach and the other one there. Vamos a ir hasta donde eh, el justo donde llegó la lava, eh, la parte nueva. The new shoreline is almost half a mile long, and Melchor must check it all for water temperature and acidity. So if the pH of the seawater is very low, or if the temperature is very high, the water vapor is going to be also some acidic uh, content. Because essentially there'll just be um, lots of acid in there. Uh, yes, yes, yes. If the new lava flows have caused the seawater acidity to increase, Melchor will need to raise the alarm. It's important to tell them how is the condition here because they can decide, OK, we have to increase or we have to decrease the radio of exclusion for the people. So we, we, are, we are going to do one analysis here. 22 degrees in the surface. So we are going now to deploy down to check. And you see here the depth. 198. Yeah. Ten-week-old lava covers a seabed. So 5.9 meters deep. We have now here 21.65 degrees centigrade. That is a normal temperature pH. It is also condition normal in the water. OK, going up. This section of shoreline is safe. But Melcher's team must pinpoint where the fresh lava is running into the water. You see there the, the, the rock flowing down? Yeah. A huge channel of molten rock runs parallel to the coastline. So the team follow it to see if it collides with the sea. You see the smoke due to the heat of the lava in contact with the water. So it's producing water vapor and perhaps with some uh, acid inside uh, this uh, smoke. So we are going to be a little bit inside that area to check. Lo que voy a poner la prueba a la mar, ¿vale? Sí, 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 sí. sí. Tengo que pegar. Para... The inflatable hulled police boat could be just meters from 1,000 degree molten rock. 
back at the top of the flow, I'm with Valentin on the hunt for hot lava. But toxic gases linger heavy in the air, and the dispersing wind could drop at any time. And yeah, as you see, I'm now the cameraman as well. That's because we know this area is unsafe to take the whole crew into, so we stripped down the team. And we're just heading in here as light as possible. And we're assisted by the Bombonis, the fire department here. We reach the edge of one of the lava flows. So now, already standing on one of the lava flows here. It's fresh, all the way around. Still got heat emanating from the area. Have you found a good spot to sample it? We can't get close enough to the molten rock, so we must follow the flow further up the hill. You can feel the heat emanating from the lava flow. I mean, this is all fresh material, and just over the hill there, that will still be flowing. Holes in the ground everywhere with roofing tiles. It makes you realise you actually stood on a roof. And what you see now is the lava flow at our height, and it's completely ripped through every building. So yeah, I found uh, something that looks suitable yet. Well, it's all very young, so it's pretty good, but we haven't found the actual flow yet. The active lava is just out of reach, but Valentin has a plan B. You cannot cross the lava flow here, it's too dangerous in order to get to the active channel. So we're trying to go around the lobe that stops beyond the front of this and try to approach it from below. But we need to hurry up because the wind is subsiding and gases are beginning to pool. You might be able to see that that blue haze over there is actually very poisonous. So all, all that blurry tinge is the sulfur you can see suspended in the air in gas form. So we don't, we don't have long to build here. In a matter of minutes, and it just looks like a apocalyptic film. La Palma's volcano has reawoken, but when it first erupted, Spanish authorities successfully evacuated everyone living in the path of the lava. But besides the occasional cockerel, there were no time to pick up pets. And hundreds of animals are still missing. Filmmaker Fabio joins the dedicated workers who scour the exclusion zone for stragglers. Today, local vets have recovered a confused kitten and are reuniting it with owners Isabel and son Pablo. ¿Y hace cuánto que no lo ve? Pues dije que reventó volcán desde dos meses y pico. Wow. Casi tres meses. Casi tres meses que va. ¡Qué lindo! ¡Qué lindo! Qué lindo. Between them, Isabel and Pablo are still missing five other cats. Volcán y hubo que salir corriendo. Los gatos no estaban por ningún lado. Digo, no había tiempo de, de buscarlo ni de, aparte el gato corre más que yo. Like thousands of other locals. Isabel's future is uncertain. But at least today, she's reclaimed a small part of her old life. And with a volcano still going off, Marine biologist Melchor is checking if the lava is causing a toxic reaction with the seawater. In front of his boat is a huge field of searing rock. 
you see uh, still there is a lot of uh, water vapor uh, due to the area is uh, still very hot. So it's the latest part, part that was formed when the lava arrived to, to the sea. We are going now to move to the to the center. We are going to put the the, the bow to the to the front just in case. Oh, so we can go, yeah, yeah. Just in case. But the lava is arriving very fast, so. They are now barely 10 meters from the scorching shore. So it's very hot there. But really, the temperature here in the water is 22 degrees, even here very close to the Solo. last lava. Solo. Half a degree higher than it should be. But... No more. Yeah. The lava flow isn't large enough to create a toxic reaction, so no one else needs to be evacuated. But this is the world's newest plot of land, and as volcanic debris washes up against its shore, new beaches are already forming. So luckily it's not gonna become some kind of five-star hotel resort. No, 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 no. The new land in Spain initially cannot be used by the people. This area here is going to be protected area. I hope that in the near future, you will have some access to this nice area that is new land, the newest line in the Canary Islands. You can see there that the okay. seagulls are already uh, living in this new lava area that was formed only three weeks ago. So they are the fair colonizers of this area. <laughs> amazing, that's amazing. Back up the hill, we've been forced to evacuate the exclusion zone. The gas is really thick. The gas is thick, eh? Nothing more, I'm digging up, I'm going to get a fuck yeah. out of it. Yeah, absolutely, get a day started. <laughs> it's better than a coffee, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but the wind has picked up again, and we're back on the hunt for hot lava. Further down the hill, in an area where more than just houses are buried. So this is the Rancho Cemetery, which was invaded by lava about a week ago. And it's rather grim, actually. It uh, must be hard for a lot of people who've got their loved That's ones right, in there. Yeah, Just beyond the graveyard, pumping out plumes of toxic gas, is the edge of the recent lava flow. Obviously very fresh, still very hot. This isn't the liquid section where you'll see uh, a lot of material still blowing hot. We can still see some flames over there. It's still very fresh. But you've, you've got one option to get this, this sample. This is not the place you want to linger around here for long. It may not be molten, but this lava is still in excess of 600 degrees. So the firefighters very carefully cut out the samples. Yeah, they were uh, stuck straight in there. Right, so that is sample collected. Several three samples from the edge of this lava flow. Still smoking hot. And uh, they just use a bit of water to pull that down rapidly there. Obviously to get into a vehicle. Again, we're getting, um, our time limit is up here. We don't have time to be lingering around. How are these samples looking? Are they looking what you wanted? Well, I think we have to go now. Even with our masks, the toxic air is still overwhelming. Come on, let's go! It's a bit of a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> so far, not my favourite flower. <laughs> Outside the exclusion zone, we can inspect our spoils. Wow. What's it feel like, Chris? 
Heavy, nicely warm. But it's a great sample. It's nicely quenched as well. You see it's a little glossy here, so I'm really happy with that. Two of the three samples will go to the government and Valentin will use his to investigate why the volcano reawoke. You got it, you got what you came for. Yes, we got it. It's mission success. I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you for, okay, thank you, for the You're sample and, and thank you for the time. Sorry if we uh, kept you rushing there. The, yeah, no problem. <laughs> running around. Uh. <laughs> but all of the data from the teams on the ground continue to indicate that La Palma's eruption is still gearing down. And today's activity in volcanic terms is hopefully a flash in the pan. I meet back up with Stavros from the National Geographic Institute to observe what may be the final throes of this historic eruption. Sometimes I tell myself, this is just a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a real life. One of the best shows on earth right now. Obviously, we're still at some distance, but each one of those little sparks of incandescence looks like a small firework. It's actually probably be a rock between a meter and two meters wide. This eruption's been going some time now, and I believe on Saturday it's going to be the the longest eruption, well, on record that you have. Yes, on yeah, Saturday the, the the longest one. Wow. I'm not sure whether that's a celebration or a commiseration. I'm not sure which. We don't know. In any case, we we'll have to 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 learn from that eruption, mm. and uh, I'm sure that this eruption will help to save lives in the next eruption. Well, from what I've seen out from my two visits here now, you guys here are doing a fantastic job in monitoring this and making sure that when the next eruption does hit, you're going to be pretty well prepared. We'll, we'll try our best and, of course, we hope that the next time it will not have that damage that we have this time. We hope so. I'm leaving La Palma. In three days' time, this eruption will be declared over. It will be the longest eruption in the island's documented history. Lava flows completely destroyed the homes of almost 5,000 people, but amazingly took no lives. It's really impressive because they've kept casualties down to a minimum, which is fantastic. And it's down to the hard work from all the teams on the ground. The way they're working together is phenomenal. And yeah, I'd love to see eruptions like this, which are so close to civilization, handled like this in the future.